So, good evening. We are back with another episode of Neuro Thursday and we want to talk about functional neurology again or neurology or the role of the brain in terms of uh, health and disease and how to access it. So, um, this is important. This is an important issue. Why is it so important to look at the nervous system or the brain? Because uh, the nervous system is the one that regulates function. So we have this part, and I keep talking about this, and I probably talked about this in the past. We have this, this, these patients coming into practice. Um, they have functional problems, and there is estimations that it's between like 25 or 50 percent of the patients coming to a, to a general practitioner or to into a general practice. Um, that suffer from some uh, some kind of symptoms, whatever that is, uh, pain in the leg or in the knee, in the joint, or abdominal issues, uh, the digestive issues, whatever that is. And the estimation is that 25 to 50 percent is functional problem, a functional problem. So there is no biochemical disorder in some way, or there is no structural disorder. So. Um, it's a functional problem. So what system should we access to uh, get rid or to treat functional problems? The system that's uh, usually there to regulate function, which is the brain. So I keep emphasizing that, and I'm going to be talking about this probably for the next 30 years, and I've been talking about this for 18 years already. So yes, um, medicine without the brain, without neurology, without functional neurology, um, is not complete. Absolutely not. So this is why we need to talk all the time about functional neurology. So what did we do in the past? We looked at uh, different parts of the brain, uh, or different parts of the nervous system through the receptors in the periphery, the nerves, the spinal cord, the brain, of course, itself. And for the past, I think, three episodes, um, I talked about the autonomic nervous system or the central autonomic nervous system because there's always one thing we kind of seem to forget we talk about motor systems or proprioception uh, or sensory systems stuff like that so this is all kind of like a mathematical thing it's a processing thing so the brain is processing information um, to processing and integrating information which is an important aspect so this is like a calculator or a computer uh, processing information and putting them together to create a, an adequate output so this is what we always talk about in terms of the algorithms but we need to always keep in mind that behind the algorithms there's a system that's keeping uh, the biology bio biological tissue working which is um, uh, supplying it with oxygen, supplying it with glucose, supplying it with vitamins, cofactors, minerals, whatever the brain or the tissue needs. And the brain is also tissue. So this is something we always uh, want to look at first. So if we have, and I'm going to start drawing something here. So if we have um, a patient coming in with a problem, wherever that problem is in the uh, uh, motor system or in the guts or whatever it is, um, we always have this peripheral aspect and the central aspect. So the peripheral aspect um, we want to look or emphasize more today, but I want to walk through this whole idea of looking at the nervous system at different levels regarding a symptom or a system that is dysfunctional with that is causing pain and or discomfort in the pain that for uh, that's why the um, the patient is coming to my practice so so where do we start we start with the central nervous system so i'm going to draw a brain right here which is yeah kind of looks like a brain and the brain stem of course and the cerebellum and the spinal cord so what we always want to do first is correlate what the patient has so maybe he has a knee pain so i'm going to use uh, uh, an example i use very often so he has knee pain so this is the knee and this uh, system is, I'm going to draw this a little bit better so you can read this. This is the knee and this is what is causing pain. So here is my um, symptom. So uh, first thing we always want to do is correlate what part of the nervous system is not working in sync or is not coherent or congruent with the part that's causing uh, trouble. So there must be something because you will always have a symptom at a place where there is a dysfunction. And it can only be like a sensory dysfunction or it could also be a um, referred pain. So, But the, the symptom is connected in some way 
to the problem or is the problem itself or is part of the problem. So uh, we always look at this first. So we correlate the knee or the symptom to parts of the different parts of the uh, spinal cord and also, of course, different parts of the brain. So, of course, there's different aspects when you uh, think about the brain. Of course, there's sensory system, there's motor systems, but there's also autonomic systems in the brain which could regulate uh, a part of the function of the knee. But before we look at the tracts, the, the cortical spinal tracts or the spinal uh, bulbar tracts or whatever we're looking at, um, first thing we always need to look at is what's going on inside the brain. That means not the tract or the pathway is the problem, but the part of the brain of that pathway is the problem. So um, we always look at four issues. The four issues being, uh, we need to look at the encasing, at the, at the um, surrounding of the nervous system. So of course here it's the skull, and it's the meninges and the dura. So that's what we need to look at because that affects the function of the system. So of course you have a head trauma, um, you have a skull problem, you have a dysfunction in the skull, which basically means you might have a neurological dysfunction in your trigeminal nerve. And since this nerve is also connected to the blood vessels, you might get then you might then get a dysfunction in your blood supply or in your vasomotor system or in your pressure system inside the skull, which might then cause a dysfunction in a spinal or corticospinal tract, which will then cause eventually a problem in your knee or in your leg. And uh, also what is important about this is that this, I call this sometimes, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So a, pa a patient comes in with a knee problem, but he could have a motor problem on the whole side, affecting the, all the whole side of one body, depending on how large the affected area is in the brain. And uh, this, but only this is causing pain. So if I start working with the knee only, I might miss the bigger picture saying, well, I have a sensory motor issue in the brain, which is much larger than the knee, but I can't see it because the pain is only in the knee and the patient's only saying, well, I have this knee pain when I walk or when I run or whatever I do. So this is why it's also important to correlate this with the functions or parts of the brain and ask that part of the brain or the central nervous system, what's going on over here? So what's your autonomic status? So we have the thing surrounding the meninges and everything surrounding the, uh, the, the, the central nervous system. Of course, we also have blood supply to the brain, um, which is giving uh, the system oxygen, uh, glucose, whatever it needs to work properly. So energy production, ATP production, very important. Uh, without energy, nothing is working. Like I said before, my phone that I'm looking at right now, my camera I'm looking at over here, my computer, nothing would be working. All those complicated algorithms would not be worth a thing if there would not be any kind of electricity making that thing work. So same thing in the brain, uh, complex movements, not possible if you don't have ATP production going uh, for you. So um, blood flow to the brain, blood flow to the spinal cord, very important issue. Taking stuff out of there, uh, the blood flow, the venous blood flow and also the lymphatics. We know by now that we have a lymphatic uh, system in the head or the glymphatic system inside the brain transporting a waste uh, out of the system and transporting that out to be degraded or then uh, put away with, so out, excreted out from the body. So these three things plus what we have inside the nervous system itself. So the other things are like outside, surrounding the nervous system, also part, of course, already part of the, the peripheral autonomic nervous system like the sympathetics. But inside the brain is are the, the activation system. We talked about that last time. So the different neurotransmitters, serotonin, acetylcholine, dopamine, all noradrenaline, all those neurotransmitters that are changing, modulating the, um, the activity of the brain, but at the same time, and that of course makes sense, modulating blood flow to the brain or to the parts of the brain. So that's like the intrinsic system. I always call it this nervous system inside the nervous system. So you have an autonomic nervous system surrounding the brain, you have an autonomic nervous system in the brain, uh, modulating the activity and of course modulating blood flow in the brain. So this is what we need to look at and we always look at this first because if I don't see the problem in the brain or in the spinal cord, in the central nervous system, probably not going to get rid of the problem in the periphery. But before we even start looking at like a sensory motor function, which might be a result 
because we don't see autonomic function, then we might have a sensory motor function. But then what's very important, we need to go to the peripheral autonomic system, which takes care of the knee itself. So there is tissue here. It's not just a uh, mechanical hinge. Um, you need, a mu you have muscle, you have, uh, you need energy, a high energy supply is needed for the muscles really working strong. So, of course, that ATP, which you only uh, have like 25 grams in your body, that's at least what I read, and you need about half your body weight of ATP if you're just like walking around and working all day. So, there's not of ATP um, build up and then degradation and build up and stuff like that going on. Half your body weight of ATP you use every day. So, of course, that system needs to work. So, we're going to have to look at the autonomic nervous system in the periphery. So, um, let me just draw this here in a way like the cervical ganglia. Um, so, we have these up here. Of course, they also supply the head, the brain, if we want to draw this up here. They also supply that. But then we have all these, uh, especially the sympathetic system, which is like the activation system um, of the periphery. Um, because it's changing blood flow from and especially to the system. So we need to correlate the knee and the knee might be attached to some lower part of the um, autonomic nervous system. And then through, and this is the important thing, um, not going through the central nervous system. So we now know that um, a, an activation or a um, activation in the autonomics can be completely separate from activation of the central nervous system. So um, you can go through this, um, this part of the autonomic nervous system and activate, and I need a different color here, and activate the heart. So let me just draw the heart right here. Um, so you have the heart here in the middle and you can activate this through uh, just going through the autonomics and then, of course, changing blood flow going, whoops, and I wanted to draw this red. I didn't want to draw this black. Blood flow to the knee. So these are autonomic regulatory systems, so reflexive systems um, that don't need the central nervous system. Of course, you have blood flow regulation also in the central nervous system, uh, in the brain stem and, and other parts of the brain. And But this is uh, has very much to do with connecting body function to the outside world and in a, in a more integrated fashion also to my state of mind or to my state of emotion, etc. This is just like oh, the knee um, is starting to work. Let's get some more blood towards the knee or to towards the leg because that's what's going to happen. So exercise pressor reflex, although that is uh, mitigated through the brain stem, or that's what you at least read in the literature, there is probably a significant amount of uh, exercise pressure reflex or some kind of reflex, uh, autonomic reflex going directly through the autonomic system. At least that's the, what has been described now. You don't need the central nervous system to regulate homeostasis in the periphery. So um, this is something I didn't understand for a long time. So for a very long time, I was looking for autonomic systems in the brain. Of course, they are uh, the insula, the hypothalamus, and the brainstem, all of the brainstem, and also part of the cerebellum are working in the autonomic system or working towards the autonomic system. So, but I could not explain and I could not um, um, regulate and solve all the autonomic issues showing up when I was working with my patients. So, this is why I had to start looking at the peripheral autonomic system to really uh, then uh, get all the problems out of the way. So this is what we do. We work through the uh, ganglia. And of course, if you look at the cervical ganglia, of course, you have here for the heart, ex uh, for example, you have here T T1 till T7 and also the cervical ganglia, which still have fibers going towards the heart. So all of these matter or might matter and might cause a regulation. And here's now the, like, like I said, the fun part of it. Um, of course, part of this is going towards the brain. So this, also, of course, has a blood vessel going to the brain. And you always have to keep in mind that if you're looking at a function, especially like of the motor system of the muscle the tissue, using a lot of energy, thank you for watching, <laughs> um, using a lot of energy, part of that energy is needed in the muscle or in the tissue surrounding the knee or the leg. 
And the other part of the energy is needed in the brain because the brain needs to make calculations and needs to send down electrical impulses into the muscle all the time. So the muscle needs to be activated all the time through the brain. And at the same time, as the muscle needs um, fluid, oxygen, glucose, fats, whatever, um, the brain also needs that supply. So that has to be activated uh, in, in, the, in the same fashion, but of course the activating systems are different and they, they need to be connected because if you start moving and your brain is saying, well, I know what to do and I got the oxygen, I got the ATP, um, but the knee doesn't, well, there's your problem. Other way around, your knee has all the ATP, all the oxygen, glucose, or the muscle has all it needs. Uh, the brain doesn't, well, here goes the brain, the brain uh, uh, um, fatigues, yeah, so, um, and the fatigue can be pain, but not in the brain, so the patient's not coming in and saying, well, I think my motor cortex is fatiguing uh, ahead of time, so like after 10 minutes of running, I get this uh, pain in my brain, yeah, so that's not happening, it's the pain in the knee, which might still be caused by a fatigue, a neurological fatigue might be, be because it's caused by a, a autonomic dysfunction in this um, central nervous system or in the brain may be caused by head trauma. So these are two aspects. This is the first one. This is the second one. Of course, there's other aspects like the lymphatic system. So you have um, you have this um, lymphatic system the the which uh, which we defined by the cisterna, which not everybody has, but this part of the, uh, of the, of the central lymphatic system in the abdomen, which uh, seems to play uh, a, quite a big role in draining different systems and regulating lymphatic flow. You have the, um, you have the, um, oh, I'm, I can't think of the name, <laughs> that's strange. Usually the spleen, sorry, the spleen, you have the spleen. So these are two important parts. Of course, you have the thymus gland and you have the lymphatics in the gut and you have the lymphatics in the, um, or the lymphatic system, the bone marrow. So the bone marrow, of course, also very important lymphatic system. So there is like two aspects of correlating a problem to lymphatics. One is lymph, lymph flow. So you need a lymph drainage from the leg to work. So the, the lymphatic vessels and the lymph nodes need to work, but also um, you need lymph activity in the lymphatic uh, organs, and lymphatic glands like the thymus gland and the spleen, taking care of the waste, taking care of maybe bacteria. You fall, you run, you fall, you scratch your knee, bacteria goes and gets into the body, needs, they need to be filtered out. This is what the spleen can do, and also, of course, the liver can do that. So that's also a very important function to keep you out of trouble, to keep you from having an infection. Um, so lymphatic system. So there is also a lymphatic connection, at least from the cisterna to your knee. So this is also very important. Lymphatic flow, uh, which is one important aspect. Um, so here, of course, you also have this aspect of, uh, of the... Um, central systems like the blood flow systems or the heart, the vascular system and the lymphatic system, very important for the periphery, for the brain also to work properly. So there's a huge amount in my eyes um, on, in dysfunction relating to vascular or lymphatic issues in the body. So, and then of course you have uh, like similar to the brain, like an activation system, which would be situated more down here, um, activating the blood flow, of course, in the periphery itself to at the knee. So not so much a reflex going towards the heart, so the heart works more, but it's a reflex going through the peripheral systems directly to the knee to regulate local blood flow. So you, those are more like the activation system using noradrenaline, for example, as a neurotransmitter, similar to the noradrenaline used in the brain to regulate blood flow in the brain itself. So um, similar mechanisms here, peripheral activating systems, meaning uh, especially blood flow to improve blood flow, and then, of course, you have this issue um, which we also need to look at if somebody comes in with a knee pain is uh, what we call like collateral. So you have like the bladder sitting down here or parts of the gut sitting down here, uh, the, the sigmoid or the rectum. And the connection, the, the autonomic connection to those glands regulating blood flow, flow here is kind of like in parallel to the, um, to the autonomic regulation in your leg. So here you have these connections which are not, which are not like um, 
physiological in terms of, um, well, the bladder is very important for the knee. Of course, if you look at it this way, the, the leg is producing waste and this waste is filtered by the kidney and this waste then goes into the bladder and is stored there and then it's uh, excreted. Um, but uh, I, you can't really say that the knee needs the bladder <laughs> for it to work properly. In a way you can, in another way you can't. So we regard these as like collateral. So um, yes, the, 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 the parts of the, the s systems inside the pelvis are, have the same connections um, or use the same uh, pathway, autonomic pathway, than the leg uses. So this is why you get these referred uh, issues, these re uh, reflexive issues, autonomic issues going into the periphery. Um, so, um, for example, if you, if you look at the, if you look at it in a in a global perspective, everything that is like um, at the top here um, goes more into the upper parts of the body, upper limbs, neck and head, everything that's below the diaphragm goes more into the lower parts, the back and the legs, etc. So front part, more in the front part of the legs, the more deep, deeper parts in the pelvis or also the parts that are more in the back um, go more into the back side of the leg or are more uh, connected to the back side of the leg. So meaning if you have a problem there, like if you have a uh, inflammation or a, in, an infection in your gland, like in your bladder, you might get back pain or leg pain or all these things because there is like something like called a referred pain, but also reflexive issues. So um, viscerosomatic reflexes or somatic visceral reflexes going both ways, it's not only going from the glands into the uh, somatic system. So of course, these need to be looked at. And what we usually do then is uh, if we have like a problem at the knee and we through the testing we do, and I'm going to show this in the next videos again, also how we test this uh, through the testing, you can correlate it to a part of the autonomic system and therefore correlate it to maybe a certain um, um, a certain part of the body. And very often uh, th that those parts are acutely uh, inflamed or have been inflamed, like people having recurring uh, bladder infections in the past, like I've had 20 bladder infections and now uh, my, w my hips are not working correctly, things like that I've seen uh, all along. So this, then you look at the um, autonomic regulation in the gland and I believe, and, or at least that's what I see, is that um, the regulation of the glands is like superior to the regulation of your, uh, of your somatic system or your muscle, at least that's how it appears. So you want to regulate the function within the glandular system to regulate the function going towards the knee, towards the muscle, the tissue that's surrounding the knee or regulating the knee. So this is what we do then is we look at these issues right here, the, the, the more autonomic issues or the more glandular issues to regulate then the somatic dysfunction that the patient is coming to the practice with. So um, this of course gives you a very, um, very broad view, uh, functional neurological view. And I need to look at my watch that I'm perfectly in time today. <laughs> so this gives you a very broad view and this is not everything we're gonna be talking about. There's more to talk about, also about integrated functions. So looking at the uh, central nervous system, looking for dysfunction, autonomic dysfunction in the central nervous system. Of course, if it's not autonomic, it could be a matter of uh, pathway or track, so like cortical spinal tract or things like that. And I always consider that then more an electrical problem. So the other thing is uh, like a biochemical problem, uh, blood supply, oxygen supply, and the other thing is an electrical problem, like the, the pathway not working correctly, which is uh, um, bringing electrical signals into the muscle for the system to work. So um, another um, maybe system that could be interesting, and we're going to be talking about ne that next time a little more in detail, is the lungs. So I'm just going to draw the lungs in here. So next to the heart, you have the lungs, and I'm going to draw them in blue because that's what they um, are referred to air they suck in the air, they take out the oxygen, and they, they get rid of the CO2. And of course, that oxygen wants to be, goes into the bloodstream, is then delivered to the muscle, so the muscle can produce ATP, so it can contract and relax, of course, 
um, I read, which was quite interesting and which would make sense that people get cramps if they have a lack of energy, if they're running out of energy, is because the relaxation of the muscle is more, uh, needs more ATP than the contraction because contraction is just through inflow of C uh, of calcium and then the calcium has to be pumped back out which needs more energy so relaxing the muscle um, and this is something of course you need to consider if uh, somebody has a high tone and muscle could be a neurological problem but also could be a biochemical problem in terms of lack of energy so this um, is in a way directly connected through the blood vessels and bringing uh, blood flow to the knee so there's more direct connection but one also interesting connection not in terms of just the lungs but in terms of the thorax is um, what we're going to be looking at next time is uh, integrated movement so how does the body movement uh, of your limbs correlate with the uh, breathing movements of your thorax so there is like what we call reflexive patterns or um, reflexes or movement patterns and you have these all throughout the system and we will be looking at these two aspects of like uh, the autonomic supply to the lung um, or the bronchi and also the um, more movement aspect of the thorax relating to the knee. So there you have like two issues, one being more autonomic biochemical issue uh, relating to the function of the leg and the other one being a mechanical or biomechanical or neurological issue correlating body movement with, uh, uh, at, at one part, body movement with body movement at another part. So this is, uh, of course, a very interesting issue. We're going to be talking a lot more about this in the future in terms of uh, integrated body function. So when I see people muscle testing, which we of course also do a lot because that's just a neurological, ne neurological way of looking at the muscle function. A lot of people just test if the muscle is strong. So I say, well, what does that tell you? Okay, the muscle is strong. So the brain can activate the muscle through the pathways. Well, that's pretty good because then it says, I have a connection to my muscle. but what we also need to look at is, is the muscle able to inhibit? So can the muscle go down in function? Can that be regulated? So that's very important for us to look at the inhibition of the muscle or the capability of the muscle to inhibit. But then maybe even more important or not more important, but also important is integrated muscle function. So we always have these, these three issues. We're gonna be talking about those at some other point. So um, yes, I'm gonna wrap this up today. I wanted to stay, uh, um, I didn't want to uh, talk longer than 30 minutes, so these videos are not that long. If you miss this, if you want to watch this um, in, in the whole length, we'll be storing it, we'll be sharing it on Instagram TV, and we'll also be sharing, of course, through our Zoom recording in on our website. And uh, not on our website, on our n uh, YouTube channel, Neurolog Academy TV. So um, anytime there's like now 17 episodes or will be 17 episodes and we have a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, um, if I haven't mentioned that yet, um, we have right now still the whole first seminar, the way we teach it on YouTube um, as like, I think it's 18 YouTube videos, uh, tutorial videos, and also the manual available. So if you want to check that out, um, and we will be good news, we will be teaching, very likely will be teaching um, in English uh, very soon, uh, starting next year, probably August, September, and very, very likely Copenhagen, Denmark will be our location. So th we're just starting to plan that. So already I uh, want to share that with you and uh, you might want to join us at a seminar and learn this whole thing of functional neurology. I've been doing this for 18 years in my practice. Um, I think my patients are quite happy. There are still patients coming to my practice. And uh, yes, this is the way you can treat uh, functional problems through functional neurology accessing and we call that neurofunctional integration that's what we call it so um, thank you very much for watching and uh, like i said we'll be sharing this on instagram tv i'm going to say bye bye to everybody on instagram thanks for watching and i'll be back on the 6th of january we're going to have our next neuro thursday thank you have a good time merry christmas maybe i want to say and happy new year and maybe see you on the 6th of, of january bye mm -hmm.